Today we're doing a home gym workout because today is not too favorable to go out and drive around. So we're gonna have this workout inside. Again, this is gonna be brought to you by Bells of Steel because we got some new toys today because today we're gonna do a kettlebell only leg workout. I'm gonna bring you guys through that. And for those of you who are stuck at home or stuck without gyms or whatever, if you don't have kettlebells, head over to Bells of Steel. If you do have kettlebells, watch closely. I'm gonna give you guys some tips, follow along, and the next time you do legs with kettlebells, try this workout. Let's try it out. We got hardcore stim, two scoops of that. Definitely gotta grab the Turk. Four for me. Peach Mango hardcore stim will be out very, very soon. High stem workout, pre-workout, can't wait. Oh, it's good. Peach Mango is killing it. All right, let's head downstairs and start this workout. Okay, so this is what we got today, guys. Kettlebell legs, three sets, 45 seconds to one minute max sets. We're gonna push that. So we're gonna start off with a start stop, kettlebell start stops with um, resistance band adductors, so like crab walk almost. Now we're gonna get into goblet squats, then deadlifts, and then superset Romanian deadlifts with reverse lunge. So as you can see, this is, is this isn't an extremely long workout if you think about it. So if I'm doing three sets of each, this is say I push everyone to a minute. Basically three sets is at three, six, nine, 12 minutes plus rest in between, and that's basically it. That's what we're doing, right? So um, this is more so just really, really, really pushing the cardiovascular and the muscle endurance. New kettlebells here from Bell to Steel. The logo, wrap the log. Anyway, so this one here is 80 pounds. This one here is 88 pounds. And then I have another kettlebell here, a small one I got from, like you kind of see the quality of this. I got this from, you know, another, uh, what do you call it? This is a Northern Lights one. But again, this is 45, 80, um, 88. So. We're gonna do um, star stop stuff with this, goblet squats with all this, um, reverse lunge, we'll probably do with this. So we're gonna see, but this is gonna be a heavy day. These are heavy kettlebells, so we're gonna push and have some fun. Let's go. Okay, so um, we'll start off here, warm up with the, uh, I call them star stops. I literally forget what they're actually called, but we're gonna call them star stops. Basically how we're doing this is we're gonna wanna, when you're setting up a kettlebell, especially kettlebell, um, let's say like kettlebell swings or whatever, you wanna line up, yourself a little bit behind it, right? So we can hinge yourself back and we can grab the belt comfortably here. You don't wanna be overreaching like this, you just wanna be here, right? So when we start a kettlebell swing, we can just kinda of lean back a bit, kinda of pull back, lean, and then start. And we're pulling from here. Now I'm doing a kettlebell start stop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one rep, basically one swing and put it back is we're gonna emphasis a lot of our glutes and hams, as well as our core, and obviously the last two, just keeping the depression and whatnot. But from here, your first rep will look like this, here, up, and then back down. Start again. Pull. Right, so I wanna make sure when I'm pulling first, I'm, I'm kinda rocking a bit to pull the weight back with my hips. Momentum, momentum up and then down. And when pushing it down by pushing my hips are gonna go the opposite direction of the kettlebell. So I don't wanna do this and then just kinda of do this. I want that to start up here and then pushing away to put it down. So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna grab these bands here, put them around here. And we're basically gonna do from here out and just this. Right, working the adductors, the abduction, right? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go 45 seconds of each. It's gonna suck, and I'm gonna get a better band than this. Let's go.
So good first set, warm up. So I'm gonna keep moving on to the next set. I'm gonna rest about a minute and a half, and then I really wanna rest. I'm gonna gauge how my heart rate goes. So I usually have my heart rate monitor on my Apple Watch, but I usually go by the a lot of time, but if my heart rate calms down before then, then I'll start. If it needs a little more rest, then I rest a little longer until my heart rate goes back to that rested state in a sense or a cool down. So the next thing I'm gonna do, same thing here, only when I do the adductors now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little squat into it. So I wanna push out each one. This is the next set. Okay, now the supersets are done. That's my warm up, active warm up. I'm gonna get into squats now. So I'm gonna go up the squats. I'm gonna start with the 80, and then we're gonna go up to 88, and then we're gonna go again. We're doing time sets, so we're gonna push 45 seconds, and then if we push the extra 50 seconds, we will. So I'm just basically doing this to guarantee that I really push my cardiovascular in this. So that's why I'm doing the 45 to a minute instead of like 30 to 45 seconds. Let's get it started. Critics like I heard you, so what? You can't kill my confidence, I think I'm the man. Tally all the fucks I ever gave on my head. Lately, so you see, the way to have 80 pounds, then I'll do 88 next. I'm gonna be pushing more and more towards that 80 ish, 5, 85, 80, 85% of my body max. So I know that I'm gonna have to keep pushing that minute to get the most out of this because the weight is heavy enough, but not heavy that I can't go that extra little bit. So that's why I'm pushing that extra minute because I have the weight necessary and the strength necessary to be able to do that. So rest it up, we're gonna do it again. Sign with the 88s. You can see that one that much more challenging. Eight extra pounds. Again, when we're doing this, we wanna really let the weight naturally pull you down, right? So when we're doing goblet squats or with a kettlebell, a dumbbell, a plate, whatever it is, let the weight do its job and pull you naturally down. Don't try to lift it up in a sense. We wanna keep engaged so we can hold the kettlebell. We don't wanna basically be doing this, holding it up, because we're gonna use our traps, our, our delts, and you'll gas it really quick. So let it help with the shoulder depression naturally. So all you're doing is getting underneath it when you're squatting, keep it nice, straight back, core engaged, good knee and hip flexion, and we're good. Now moving on to uh, deadlifts. There's a couple different ways you can do deadlifts when you're doing uh, with using the kettlebell. We're gonna stick to like more of so the conventional style because we're gonna really hit, oh, we're gonna hitting a lot of the same muscles through this whole workout. There's great knee and hip flexion in this entire workout opposed to a couple exercises maybe the deadlifts I'm about to do and the stiff leg deadlifts. But again, when we're looking at deadlifts, so setting up for a deadlift using the kettlebell, what you wanna do is take this, the handle here. The handle here is we wanna have it like literally so let it split your laces, right? You don't want it too far back because then you're not trying to reach back too far like this. So what we want to do is, like I said, keep your kettlebell here, walk up to it, have your kettlebell bar be around your laces. And from here, we're going to hand yourself back, just like a stiff leg deadlift, but we're going to go right down and bend so we can get, we're going to have some knee flexion obviously to get down and have this weight here. Now again, we're starting, you wanna have your shoulders above your ass. So if your ass is like this, and your shoulders are too low, we're too low. So you wanna be here, hinging back, and then pretend someone's tickling your armpits, and you're like, oh, no, tick them armpits. We're pulling back in here, up, or up, and then down. Like that, right? So there's a deadlift. Now the other way to do a deadlift with, with 
increasing more hip and knee flexion, we're gonna keep ourselves up and we're gonna sit down like this. So the leg is gonna come outside, almost like a frog. Right, the difference between this and this. This and this. It's almost like a sumo squat in a sense, but your legs aren't too far apart. Makes sense. Anyway, same thing. We're gonna push 45 seconds to a minute. The deadlifts, we're gonna really work on speed and you know, controlling the weight down. We don't want it smashing the floor, but we're also not looking for a long negative. We're pushing time here. Longer negatives equal in these movements. I don't care how good your core is, your back will start to gas out. we're doing this, a lot of mistakes I see is extreme hyperextension. We want to get it to, we want to finish an extension from the hips per se, but we don't need hyperextension. This isn't going to make your glutes activate anymore doing a posterior pelvic tilt. It's not going to help anymore doing this, squatting, hinging, whatever. We just want to get to this position. Naturally, we're standing up. This is, this is hip extension. So we want to be an extended posture here, not here, and definitely not here. So when you're up, you're just here, and that's it. Right, tight, boom, and that's it. Time for another set. Same thing applies for every movement we're doing from the ground up. Whether you're just doing any regular movement from a standing position, squatting, deadlifting, overhead press, whatever it is. You want your feet to be in a natural athletic position. Maybe show with a little bit of side, wherever your hips allow you to be. Then we're gonna externally rotate so we can get those knees aligned with our toes and keep them there. When I say externally rotate, I don't mean continue this so your legs keep popping out too far. We're just trying to align our knees with our toes so when we squat or hinge, they stay in that alignment and not pushing over, but also preventing a bunch of knee valgus, which is really annoying. Anyway, so we're gonna move on to our last exercise, basically supersetting Romanian deadlifts with reverse lunge. So very similar to your deadlift, only difference is minimal knee bend or knee flexion. So as you can see from here, when I'm deadlifting, I'm basically from here doing this, okay? Now, stiff leg, I'm gonna hinge and keep it here. And then I'm just here, really stretching that, right? So I'm not bending the knees, I'm really keeping the load on the hamstring and the glutes. So we wanna push this back from here and up. That's all we're doing from here to here. A lot of mistakes I see is we start to hinge and then we stop here, then we just start bending the back this way. We wanna fold this and then bend those knees a little bit so we can maintain a nice flat back still and come up. Right, remember, I'm lowering by my hips flexing and my knees giving a little bit of flexion to come back to put me here now, grip with my toes and up. All right, so when we're doing lunges, we want to really create that knee and hip flexion, right? And when we're doing this again, we don't want to do this whole tightrope thing where we're trying to 
step back and step behind here, then we're like, oh my God, I can't keep my balance. Like you normally would walk, chill with apart, and as your hips, as you basically load hips as you walk, same thing. You're basically gonna transfer that weight. So when you're doing it, make sure we have that weight transferred over here to this hip. And then when we're here, staying upright, pushing that foot back, pushing that hip back. We're extending the heel. I mean, we're extending the hip. Hip extension in this, right while we're having a little bit of flexion here. So extension from back, right here. Then we have a nice knee over toe, right? My dorsal flexion is getting a lot better, which is amazing. Either way, we want knee aligned with the toe. We don't have to go over toe. And I will do a little, a do, I will do a video on knee over toe, guys. But either way, while well, I'm aligned, right, from here and up. We don't want our knee down like this in front of us. We're using too much of this. When we're working on lunges, whether they're split squats, Bulgarian split squats, walking lunges, whatever, the leg that's doing the work, the other leg is just there to help with stabilization and balance, right? You're still engaging it and still activating it, but you're not using it. I would say 90% of this leg is being used, 10% of this leg is being used, if that makes any sense. Could be completely off a little bit. I'm just kind of giving you the idea of how to approach a lunge. So we're doing this, if you watch me closely, I push my leg back and I sit and down. And when I'm up, my leg isn't really doing, my back leg isn't doing anything until I'm really close to the ground. And even at that point too, this leg here isn't really doing much. Everything's on my glutes, right? My glutes, hams, right? On the way down, flex here and up, right? And keep a nice good posture. We don't wanna be leaning like this. We don't wanna be like this either. Do this 90 degrees bullshit. The knee needs to travel forward, the hip needs to travel back. So I see any of you guys doing this shit, you're doing it wrong. Put that flex. I can't stand up right now. Now I can, right? Big difference. Me trying to stand up like this, difference, right? You're using your glutes, your hams, quads like you should. That is it guys for my Bells of Steel kettlebell leg day. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you guys have kettlebells at home, give us a try. If you even have dumbbells, give it a try as well too. Remember, don't think you have a bunch of time to finish things. Remember, if you're doing some, if you, remember, if you're doing sets that are designated with time, I want you to really focus on more of the reps and not the actual counting of the reps, but the quality of each rep. You have a lot of time to do very, very quality reps within that set. Anyway guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video guys. If you did, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share. You don't become what that title like it is, transparent or vulnerable truth. And for coaching guys, johnashe.com. Check out the description below guys. Hit those discount codes and promo codes to help change your life or save your life for the better. I promise you that. Grab a cookbook. Check out those private emails for that private content for you guys to get better at everything that involves your fitness journey and life. Mental health still works. And guys, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Send me your progress pics, your foodie pics, and your training clips, and I'll repost a few. So like tag me, mention me, and then put my name in, then I can just repost it for you. Because you know how it is. Iron sharpens iron. Progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep dream chasing. Peace.